Okay, welcome. So what we're going to do is now show you how to factor a quadratic when we have the absolute value of our a is greater than one. So what we've already talked about is mostly the problems that we've been doing is if a was larger than one, we were able to factor it out. Um, or a was already equal to one, so we could just apply a factoring technique. Now, we talked about a couple different forms as far as solving this. And let's just kind of go back when a was one. Remember, we could set up our diamond or our x technique. And we could set up the box technique. Um, but either way, what we have, when we had the box technique, you know, we had x squared where a was 1. So we knew that the side lengths here were x and x. Um, over here, we just took our c and our b, and we said this was c, this is our b, and this is our p and our q. So all we had to do was figure out what were the two numbers that multiplied to give us c, added to give us b, and then those are going to be our two factors. If you remember, we could write it in our factored form. Right? And we can easily write it in factored. And since a was 1, we didn't even have to write it. And then we already had something factored. But now we actually are going to have an a. And it's, so our factoring technique is going to be a little bit different because we're going to have different ways. Let's say if we have an a equals 1, let's say this is 12. Well, it's not going to be x and x. And it could be you know, 4 times 3. It could be 6 times 2. It could be 12 times 1. So we're not going to have perfect side length. So I'm going to show you some techniques on how we can solve a quadratic when our a is going to be greater than 1. And the most important thing for us to remember is remember we're solving. And right now I'm just showing you a quadratic equation. This could also represent, we could also do this with quadratic functions. But the main important thing, again, for solving is we want to set this equal to 0. And once we can set it equal to 0, it's going to be very important that we have it in the form of our a times x minus p times x minus q, because then we can apply the 0 product property and to be able to solve each one of these for x. So I'm going to show you some techniques on how to solve a quadratic um, to find our x-intercepts, our roots, our zeros, uh, depending on our question, when our a, the absolute value of our a, because we still can have an a that's negative. That just means our uh, graph will be reflected. But when the absolute value of a is greater than 1. So check out the videos. Hope you enjoy. Thanks.